Hello, my name is Portia and welcome to the IPFS All Hands On Call. We are in the process of changing our format, so we are beginning earlier. Give me one moment. Okay, sorry about that. So let us continue. So as you heard before, we are changing our format and um, it's still 30 minutes, but we will begin with announcements. Then we will have our main talk. And after our main talk, we will leave some time for questions and answers. So let us begin with announcements. Um, if you have an announcement, please do raise your hand. Do we have announcements? I believe I saw David had an announcement. Yeah, I think we'll have to wait till the end to do announcements because people won't be on yet. Okay, no worries. Um, why don't we give them a couple of seconds? All right, I do see some more people. Okay, so we are going to change our format slightly today and we're going to begin with the talk. So we're going to hear from a Rockley from uh, Mozilla and he's going to talk about the decentralized web. So um, and Rockley, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, you did remarkably well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. <laughs> uh, hi everyone, my name is Irakli Gozalishvili. I work for Mo at Mozilla and uh, we've been lately working on the, some exploration of how we can integrate uh, and enable DEVA protocols into the web. Uh, and specifically we're exploring it through the web extension space right now. Uh, I'm gonna show you a few slides that I put together to kind of show what it's all about. Uh, so we call it libdevab. It's on Mozilla GitHub account. Uh, it's developed all the main tree right now. Uh, and it's set of very sp uh, small primitive APIs that enables implementing something like IPFS node in the browser itself. Uh, the first one is a protocol API. Uh, it just allows you to define an implementation for your protocol. So in this example that you see on the screen, it uh, allows you to define Diva protocol and it allows you to basically get a request and stream the response, which can be whatever you want it to be. And it uh, has a uh, correct uh, origin, meaning that origin will be host name and the schema combination. So if you have many different things on the IPFS network, they will be all isolated through the standard web uh, content security policies. Um, and there's an example how it actually works. Uh, there's a DNS uh, service discovery. It allows bas uh, basically nodes on the same network to be able to discover themselves uh, through the DNS uh, or MDNS. Uh, this is how actually IPFS go nodes discover each other. Uh, so in theory, you could implement uh, in web extension way to discover other nodes on the network and start communication with them. Uh, and this is how the API looks like. You basically have to choose a type protocol, which is either TCP or UDP and a port number, and you can pass some metadata too, and you will be able to discover all those nodes on the network. Um, so there's a TCP socket API, which is just a simple TCP API really. Uh, it allows you to both listen and connect and exchange messages. Um, and there's a UDP socket API, uh, which allows you to do both broadcast messages or form the direct connections and exchange data again. Uh, and finally, the file system API, we're actually not sure if you wanna keep it or not in long term, uh, but what it allows you to is uh, mount a directory as a file system and have a read write access to it. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky because we need to go through the user prompts and make sure that we don't give away access to the whole file system. 
and there's also quota management stuff. So a lot of that stuff overlays with a bunch of other uh, storage mechanisms, uh, but it seems to perform way better than say IndexedDB. Uh, so we'll see how it will go. Uh, that's pretty much all the APIs right now. So uh, in the first place, we implemented them over the main tree. Uh, they live on GitHub. Uh, you can come and contribute as well. Uh, uh, that does have some limitations though. That means that you can't build an add-on and ship it. Uh, uh, you can build the experimental add-on and try it out. So the next step for us is to actually land it to the tree and make it part of the officially supported uh, web extension APIs. Uh, that process itself contains many bunch of other steps. And one of them is uh, defining a thread model, uh, which is pretty much what I'm busy with trying to get out. Uh, and once we have that in place, I think it would be just a matter of actually landing those changes into the Firefox. Uh, there are some of the additional work that we're planning on doing. Uh, the APIs, when, they, when we wrote them, we didn't have a readable or writable streams in the tree. Um, and now we have them, so we will most likely update them to use readable streams instead. Um, there's a few things that are still open and kind of are not as high on my list right now, but I would welcome anyone to come in and help. I'm happy to mentor with that work as well. One of them is being uh, for the protocol API. Uh, we don't actually have support for headers. Uh, that's because headers are actually tied to the HTTP protocol. So for the custom protocols, there's no such notion as headers. So if you want to come up with something uh, that would require some changes into how Firefox works, uh, they're not too difficult changes, but they are changes nevertheless. Uh, there are a few other low hanging fruits that somebody can tackle if you want to come and help. Uh, the best thing would be to go at Mozilla LibDWeb on GitHub and just open an issue or there's a pointer to everything else you can get in touch with us. So that's a broader overview. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. If you could awesome. stop sharing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, yay. This was amazing. Um, so if you have any questions, please like raise your hand. Actually, or just I shout out the question. I should have mentioned uh so uh Lil and Alan Shaw, I think they did an amazing job at integrating that stuff into the a uh, branch of the Fire uh, IPFS companion. Uh, so you can actually see some of the stuff were already working in the IPFS land. Uh, there's also a DAD version uh, that is being worked on uh, that actually runs uh, Freeder, which is Twitter clone in DAD network over that, um, over the add-ons that use LibDV. Uh, and I think there are some attempts to get it into the secure Scuttlebutt as well, but I don't know how far along they are. All right, Alan, please. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, it just, I just wondered if there were any, is, if there was any way um, the IPFS or anyone else uh, could contribute that isn't code related, like documentation or, or something like that? Um, yeah, that would be great too. Uh, in fact, I sh I'm happy to open the thread model worked uh, more open to it. If you can come and contribute that too, I think that would be in general useful in terms of understanding. Uh, personally, that's not something I have ever done before. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's been new and been learning how to like see all the ways things can be abused that I could not imagine. Uh, so I could definitely use help there too. And that doesn't necessarily require any code writing, more kind of thinking, critical thinking in terms of how what we're exposing can be abused by bad players. And those can be bad web extensions or it could be malicious content hosted in IPFS, for instance. Uh, uh, Documentation-wise, that would be another great help or making small examples. So there's also a bunch of work needs to be done in the test infrastructure-wise. Uh, so part of the problem is Mozilla has test infrastructures that is tightly coupled with a Firefox build steps and all of this stuff. And we didn't want to bring that for this project. So it was easier to develop. 
but that also meant that we don't have any test infrastructure. So we started kind of building our own and there's something in place which is not perfect, but that could use some help or just adding more tests would be also helpful. Uh, so all of those kind of things. In general, if you think you can help, just come on to RC channel and I'm happy to accept any help or navigate you towards what can be helpful. What is the RSC channel? Uh, I believe it's dweb on uh, mozilla.rc.org or com. Sorry, I don't, you'll see me. You know, uh, it's on GitHub, it's linked there. Sorry, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I added to notes. Thank you, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Jim. Um, I'm curious about the uh, the threat model, and uh, it seems to me like the, the extension, if you give it full access to TCP UDP, that's pretty dangerous, like in terms of like people, to, malicious people. So I don't, I think like if you, if the, the extensions were like, there's a gatekeeper in Mozilla really goes over the security on this extensions that are submitted. Is this going to require Mozilla to change the way it accepts uh, extensions for these particular APIs? Oh, so ideas, the reason we're going through the thread. Oh, sorry, Jim, I, I think you got cut off and I thought you were done and I oh, didn't get the last bit. Uh, um, yeah, so our intention is that it should not require any additional steps uh, other than just writing an add-on and shipping it. Uh, that's why I need to go to the thread model to answer the concerns whether it is dangerous. It is, that's part of it. Uh, so, and often thread model, as I understand it now, is basically deciding, listing what things can, what harm it can do. And then sort of trying to place mitigations in place to prevent the larger issues. And for some issues we might say, well, that's kind of user choice in terms of installing the add-on. Uh, and I think big chunk of that will fall into that. But TCP API is not actually as interesting. I think the protocol handler is the one, one of the most interesting ones because uh, there's a lot of ways a malicious add-on or malicious content on IPFS, for instance, could uh, get, uh, you know, try to impersonate uh, popular websites. For instance, somebody could write a HLLS uh, protocol handler that will try to trick you into thinking that you're on amazon.com and steal your credit card number or uh, some variation of that. So one of the mitigations there would be to make the UI of the address bar distinct enough that users can tell it, or maybe on the first load to do some thing like a door hanger telling you, hey, did you notice that it's actually not the website that you might be thinking it is? Uh, and there could be many combination of those, but like trying to think of what things could go wrong and who are the bad players is helpful. I think for the TCP and UDP, it's more like we might limit the port number range uh, or have some other mechanism like that. Again, it's kind of still in the process. I'm still kind of not quite comfortable with the whole process and I don't quite understand it, but hopefully we'll get there. All right, uh, next question from Davi. Hi, uh, I actually have three points, um, two questions. And the first point being, Thank you so much. This is awesome. It keeps blowing yeah. me away to see all the work coming out of Live the Web. Uh, it, 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 again, like thinking two years ago and like oh, looking back three years ago and yeah, last year and now see that this is possible and that we already have demos of it working with IPFS is amazing. So great work. First, first question is, uh, I think we, we never talked about this, but uh, one of the topics that comes often when we talk about the peer-to-peer -peer and transports is not only TCP and UDP, but actually like the fact that we cannot like mess with the keys that get used by WebRTC or in the soon future quick. Um, we actually have a quick implementation in Go for a peer-to-peer -to -peer today. As we already know that like for browser to Go node or to JS node in Node.js, uh, we will always have to face the, the challenge of doing WebSockets and then some crypto channel and then some stream mixer, even, even if that's over a CQ connection, because again, we cannot give to the transport the keys to use to authenticate the connection and therefore authenticate the, the nodes. Um, 
is, is there any possibility or like, do you see as like part of the web kind of like exposing the APIs from WebRTC and from Quick that would enable us to set up the, the key pair that we want the, the system to use when establishing a connection? Uh, maybe I, I don't have an answer because that's not something I have thought before. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if that would be helpful in term because like libd web is con is scoped to the web extension stuff. It's not gonna be available to the web pages themselves, even though you could expose some of those things. Uh, and I don't know if there would be a benefit for you to like do that from the web extension space rather than just using direct protocol. Because like yeah. you, you anticipate you don't necessarily need to use WebRTC, or at least yeah, that's my got a socket. Yeah. <laughs> now that we have a normal socket, we can just do the encryption ourselves, right? Well, we can mount Quick on top, I guess. Uh, but like then we would have to implement the whole Quick on top of that UDP socket. And yeah. So <laughs> no, so probably Quick would it would make sense to like expose some API for that. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really looked into Quick that much, so it's hard for me to. How but, much? Uh, but I'm all totally open to like talking about the specific APIs as well. Uh, another like separate that might be related to what you're asking uh, is uh, me and there's also Dietrich Ayola at Mozilla. We are trying to form a uh, W3C interest group uh, where we can actually talk about what are the APIs we can standardize and what they should look like. I don't think TCP or UDP would be that, but some sort of uh, message channeling where you could say maybe a form of swarm uh, based on some key, and we don't necessarily talk about the, what the underlying thing is uh, to the developers, I mean, but we can, as an implementer, decide what those things could be. That might be one option we could go. Uh, and in general, I think a bunch of people from the IPFS are part of the group, where these discussions are happening. So we hope we, we, with forming an interest group, we can actually think more into how we can use D with the web. Uh, Got it, awesome. Uh, can I go with my second point, or my second question? Okay. Or, um, <laughs> yes, sure. Um, so my second question is, uh, if I uh, understood correctly from a previous conversation, a lot of the code that enabled the service discovery to work on with you have actually comes from Flyweb. Um, yes. What, what is the state of that project? Is, is like this new effort kind of like revitalizing Flyweb? Is there a new wave of interest? Uh, no. So what happened with Flyweb? I think uh, because it was touching UI parts and backend parts at the same time. Once it was backed out, they couldn't back out both of them because one of them would break. So they backed out the front part and forgot the. Uh, backend part. So it's a historical accident that the code base that we use end up in a tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's the state of it. Flyweb, I don't think it's coming back. Okay, okay. So we don't, we don't know anyone. Like, I guess, like, did we ping the team even that, like, to, to tell them that, hey, like, we are using your Yeah, code. so like, we were in talks uh, with the people who developed it and got some advice and actually they were very helpful in trying to get excellent. things working. Uh, but yeah, I don't think the Flyweb as a project is coming back, or I don't know if it, we, it is. I have not heard anything along those lines. One, some of the things that we will be trying to do at Mozilla uh, is do some explorations that might some resemble Flyweb, or it may not, on top of those APIs. Another thing that we're also looking into, so we have a Gecko uh, in the Android now, uh, so we're, and it's pretty much a set of components that you can build browsers with. And we're thinking about integrating Libby Web there too. So you can have a Android apps uh, that do kind of peer-to-peer uh, -peer stuff. Rockley, do you mind explaining a bit about um, FlyWeb for those who don't know, who aren't familiar, please? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, sorry, I should have started with that. Uh, so FlyWeb was a Mozilla's experimental project, I think, uh, a while, about four years ago or maybe two years, three years ago, I'm not sure exactly when, uh, which was essentially during Firefox OS days. And the idea was that what if websites could host their own servers, so other websites or other devices in the network could connect to that. And they had few demos where uh, there was a game running on your desktop 
uh, and you would use Firefox OS phone to connect to it as a like uh, remote control for the game uh, and multiple people could connect and they could interactively play together. Uh, and it kind of used the same mechanism that IPFS uses to discover source, connect, uh, source nodes who serve those services uh, on the local network, which is through MDNS. Or to be precise, uh, DNS service discovery, as it turns out, it's a different thing. But. Thank you. And we'll take one more question um, from Matt. Uh, thanks. I, I also want to thank you for all your work. For people who don't know, I mean, uh, uh, Gozala has been pushing on this for years, just sort of pushing, 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 um, and, and constantly rethinking how do we move this forward. Um, so could you speak to where this puts us along the line of having it be the case that an everyday user of a web browser has D-Web support automatically just because they're using a web browser. Like they don't have to do anything special in order to be able to have these protocols working when they're browsing on the web. Um, and also sort of with that, there's how has the reception been around you on the, on the side of Mozilla and like browser manufacturers? Uh, I think there are two things. So I'll try to address individually. Uh, let me decouple myself from get modern browsers or the Edutay browsers do it. It's my own opinion. I'm not sure what Mozilla's take on that is. It would be, I don't think specifically, so this web extension experiment is essentially playground to explore what the APIs could look like. Mm -hmm. I think we ought to think in terms of what can we add to the web to make it more mainstream. Like there are a few things that I think resonates when talking to people, which kind of address part of it to the other end, which is like, there are things that web just can't do today. Like I cannot get something from one device to other if I don't go through the cloud, which is just ridiculous. And I think talking about those problems with people really resonates. So maybe we ought to do something about it where browsers can just do, allow websites to do those things. And I think it's kind of more of a thinking, what if we did uh, something like, what if browser became IPFS node? Or maybe it's not IPFS, maybe it's that or some other protocol. I don't, I'm not trying to take camps, but uh, kind of thinking how we can make the web be, uh, how we can make, sorry, I'm kind of not answering really well. Uh, but I, I'm thinking we need a high level APIs that are part of web that enables applications that were people are trying to build today with IPFS or that. Uh, not necessarily this low level APIs. And that's part of one of the things that we wanna pursue through the conversations uh, between protocol implementers and browsers through the W3 interest group. Uh, in terms of how perception had been, uh, I'm being allowed to work on this, which it's been a long time coming, so it's positive. Uh, I think uh, it, time is kind of right because people are becoming more conscious about many things that they were not before. Uh, and I think uh, this is the right time to kind of push towards a decentralization more. Uh, and I think there's an opportunity for Mozilla or any other browser to do stuff there. And I think Mozilla is actually uniquely positioned being aligned with the user needs more than corporate needs uh, to be tackling that. So hopefully that would help uh, making more progress in that direction. So I'm not sure if those are like real answers, but. Oh, thank you. My best take on it. Arakli, thank you so much for sharing your time and your research with us. We really do appreciate it, so. Yes, thank you. Um, hey, can, can I ask one, one quick question? Yeah, uh, we are running low on time. Um, so I'm going to have to end questions here. Okay. So, sorry about that, David. No, no um, sorry. I'll, I'll ask offline. No worries. So this moment, we're going to do announcements. So those who have announcements, um, I believe, Davi, do you have an announcement? Um, I, Molly has an announcement. Who would like to go first? 
Uh, Molly, I, I think it. you're the first yeah. one who's gonna. Thank you. <laughs> My announcement is just for all the people who are watching us on live streaming that it should be working properly again and all of our links should go to the right places. It took Yay. a surprising amount of work to figure out what was going wrong, but it's all good now. And so in the um, next time, if we ever run into that again, it's been added to our call dialogues and our how to. So um, if you have questions, go to the FAQ and all of the instructions on how to fix it will be there. And Molly, thank you so much for figuring it out. Yay. <laughs> the hero of this call. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Uh, Davi? All right, so my announcement is kind of lame after seeing uh, Gonzalo's presentation. <laughs> but, but it's the annoying thing that everyone loves about like mid scoring uh, the OKRs. So this is the time of the quarter where we check in with our teams and we check what we had planned for the quarter and we kind of like uh, score how far have we come uh, on the weeks that have passed. And we try to do a projection, like a best guess, given the time that is left and given the new added responsibilities that we might have received um, since the quarter started. Uh, and also the things that we identified that are blockers that were announced in the beginning. Uh, what is our best guess uh, of work completed by the end of the quarter? And, and so this is a time where uh, you can get to have a conversation with the team and, and kind of like decide to adjust priorities. Typically what happens is like when you set a, a plan in the beginning of the quarter, you go from like the idea is going from point A to point B, but a lot of people like find a little bit off route. And so now it's the time to really like check in and, and see if it's more valuable to adjust course and go back um, in, uh, or if it's still valuable to go into this new direction because you found something more important. If there is something more important, that's totally fine. Uh, as long as like you make sure uh, like to check in with the team and, and to commit to that. Remember that like a lot of people rely on the stuff that is on the OKRs to like kind of plan their own uh, roadmaps, to plan their own uh, endeavors. Uh, and so if you decide to drop something instead of like putting a very low score uh, on the OKR spreadsheet, just like put zero. Like if you do a, like, or if you have, for example, a completed project, uh, pro completed score right now of zero to four because that's how far you have gotten uh, until now. And then you want to say, I'm not going to work on this anymore until the end of the quarter uh, because I want to focus on a P zero rather than focusing on this P three, for example. Um, just just put the same score and then people know, oh, okay, like, this is not going to move. Like the needle is not going to move here. Uh, and then like use your weekly things from your with your working groups just like a check in if that makes sense to everyone. Uh, get feedback. Um, or or um, if there are other stakeholders in the community that you know that were waiting on that feature, also consider like tagging them on a comment or not an issue. But that's it. Any any questions on this? Like there's an issue that kind of like explains this uh, issue seven eight uh, seven five five seven five five uh, on uh, the team management repo. Yeah, exactly. Like I expected no questions. Like. I should have like okay, awesome. <laughs> should have throw like some <laughs> the web with the web demo like in the middle. <laughs> 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 I said two thousand Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that includes the IPFS all hands on call. Thank you very much. If you have something that you would like to present to the community, this is a great for this is a great forum to do so. And I will see you next week. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you, Portia, for organizing this. It's super cool. Uh, do you, do you know we, if we, oh, okay, she's fine now. <laughs> Hello! Hey. Live post, Hello. post meeting squad. Yes, I, I P F S. <laughs> okay, see you on the JS Weekly Core Dev Sync Up in one minute.